Hello there, my name's James Green, BASE's Head of Wild Valley. Now BASE stands for the British Association for Shooting and Conservation. And we started out as an organisation called WAGB, and that's the Wildfowlers Association for Great Britain and Ireland. Wildfowl, what are they? Well, I'm going to take the next five, ten minutes or so of your time and tell you a little bit about something that I hold very close to my heart. And that is the wildfowl that frequent our estuaries come the winter months whether that's the ducks, the geese or the waders. I also want to pass on a little bit of information to you about the wonderful art of calling. So our duck species can be split into two categories. That's your diving ducks, that's your potchards, your golden eye, and your, your tufted ducks, and your gat dabblers. That's your gadwall, your shoveler, your pintail, your mallard, your widgeon, and your teal. Your shoveler, he's a wonderful bird. He's got a beak that's shaped like a shovel, believe it or not. He gets his food by sifting through the ground. Now, if you're gonna be a wildfowler, you've gotta have a decent understanding of the birds, their natural habitats. You've gotta be a fantastic ornithologist. So we'll start off with this chap. What is he? That's right, it's your mallard. It's your male bird. He's the pretty one. He's pretty because the female, the dull and the drab one, this isn't actually a mallard, this is a widgeon, but they're ground nesting birds. And in order to hide themselves from predation, from uh, birds of prey and from ground predators like your fox, they have to be camouflaged to blend in with the surroundings. The male is trying to attract a mate and he's showing off. What kind of noises do they actually make? So your male bird sounds up like he's sounds like he's got a blocked up nose. That's your male. Your female, a lot noisier. A bit like my wife. That's the laughing quack. It's the noise you most associate with ducks. At least, that's the noise I associated as a kid. But there's a whole host of different noises that the ducks make. They've got the feeding chatter. And they make that noise by going digga digga digga, digga 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 through the call. Very useful one to have. The alarm call isn't one that we want to replicate. The alarm call is this. And that's the noise that a duck will take, uh, make when they take off and they're telling everything else around them, danger, danger. So that's of no use to me. Some of these you have to blow from your diaphragm and you're making a lot of back pressure and the hand, how you hold your hand on the cord is absolutely vital. For me, I cup it in my fingers just like this. Two fingers down, just covering over the head and basically what I'm doing is I'm using my mouth to replicate, or my fingers, to replicate the mouth of a duck. And as I blow into it and I make the noise, I finish it by opening up my mouth. Clever, eh? That's your quack. And that's the basis for all duck noises for mallard, anyway. So whether it's a... Or whether it's a... It's all from the diaphragm, you're not blowing it, and you have to practice. Practice makes perfect. Now, as you understand, we're down here, we're actually on lockdown at the moment, and uh, I'm confined to my garden. So I'm probably upsetting my neighbours, so I'm going to keep this nice and short. Um, it's getting late at night, and the last thing I want to do is keep the, keep the neighbours awake. Um, but practice makes perfect. Don't do what I do and practice in the lounge, because that'll upset people. Namely, your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, your wife or your husband. Practice, the best place to practice, is if you're travelling by car or if you're actually out on the site where you can listen to the noises the birds make and then you can get your calls and try and replicate it. Travelling in a car, you can get some funny looks. I was once sat at some traffic lights, quacking away, practising on my new call and I looked to my right and there's this bloke looking at me with the weirdest of expressions you've ever seen. But still, I'm never going to see him again, so who cares? Now, what other duck species have we got here kicking around? The next one's one of my favourites. The next one's this little chap. Tiny in comparison to a maradlet. One of the fastest duck species that we've got, and one of the only birds capable of a sheer vertical takeoff. Again, this is the male, the pretty, and she's a female, and she's pretty in her own way. She's got this wonderful little green flash on her wing, 
she's small she's our smallest duck species um, and they go like the wind they fly like the clappers the female she quacks and the chap he whistles he whistles a bit like this and he whistles like that it's an amazing noise the female she sounds like this <laughs> So she has a bit of a laughing chatter. It's nowhere near as long as the mallard quack and it's a lot higher pitched. It's not a call that I would use very often. The teal bleep, on the other hand, I use regularly. Often, when you're on the foreshore, when you're on the marsh and you're listening and you're watching, the first sign of a teal, because they fly so low, is the shoo as they fly over your head. Wonderful stuff. And next up is this chap. Gets his name from his tail. Any ideas? That's right, it's your pintail. Again, this is your female. Dull and drab. A little bit smaller than a mallard in size. And again, they're a migratory duck. Travel over from, uh, from, from Northern Europe. It's sometimes in their thousands. You get places like the D estuary, which are renowned for their population of pintail. He's a beautiful looking drake. And he sounds similar to the teal. He bleeps. It's a noise a bit like this. And the female, she chatters, and it's a much quicker, raspier version of the mallard chatter. And I'll make that often in flight. One of the amazing things is that although you've got all this myriad of different noises that these duck species make, you can actually attract some of these ducks to you with the simple mallard call. I have a theory for that, and I reckon it's because on the um, breeding grounds, there's often going to be a group of mallard around. And the mallard, they're often loud, they're noisy, they're chattering. So it's the noise of home, and it's something familiar. So maybe the fact that we can call in pintail, teal, or widgeon with mallard call is because it's just something familiar. I have another theory, and that's that if you were to speak pintail to a pintail, then perhaps they're fluent and they understand what you're trying to talk to them about. Whereas if you talk mallard to a pintail, perhaps they don't fully understand what it is you're chatting about. Or perhaps I'm thinking too heavily into this. I don't know. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, next up is one of my favourite birds. This chap. And we looked at the female of this earlier when I was showing you the comparison between the mallard um, and giving you an example of the female mallard as opposed to the male. This is your widgeon. It's a cockbird. It's a male bird. Again, pretty plumage, yellow crest on top of his head, little white flash on his wing, white bum, black markings on his tail, and they come across in their tens of thousands to winter here on our estuaries and our foreshore. They'll often fly from the marshes inland to feed of, a, of an evening time on the grazing. Anywhere there's fresh water and grass could be home to many of these, but you'd never ever see them because they don't come in until the hours are dimpsy dark. And the only way to find out whether they've been there is to hunt around the edges of the feeding area looking for feces, widgeon poo, feathers, cut blades of grass. You become a great ornithologist when you have an interest in wildfowl and you can identify lots of different traits about the ducks and about the geese, where they come from and what they're doing. It's a beautiful bird. And again, he whistles. He sounds a bit like this. If you haven't been out on the estuary and heard that at dawn, ah, oh, the noise is absolutely magical. However, that as a call is one that you suck rather than blow. And as I just demonstrated, by getting a lump of grit in my mouth, you should always give it a <coughs> blow before you suck. There's nothing worse than sucking in a mouthful of mud because you put your call down on the floor. wonderful noise. The female, she growls as opposed to whistle. Now it's not a call that you need, need to practice because I'm pretty confident that's the alarm call. Now although there are a whole host of other duck species for us to learn that frequent our estuaries, whether that's shoveler, golden eye, tufted duck, potchard, um, or gadwall, there's lots, nine different species on the quarry list in the year in the UK. I don't have all of those decoys here with me. Some of them I have but they're currently in a lockup 
and that's not justifiable travel. So we'll move on to the geese. So who's this chap? That's right, it's a goose, and it's a Canada goose. And no, it doesn't fly all the way over from Canada. It was actually brought over here um, in the uh, early 1800s as ornamental wildfowl. We brought them over here to put on our ponds. And they've grown in population. Now we have a, such a huge population um, that it's, uh, it's unbelievable. When you see them everywhere, whether it's on the village ponds or on the estuaries, um, right the way from Scotland to Cornwall. They're a noisy bird. You're bound to have heard them. And they sound a bit like this. <coughs> <coughs> Brilliant noise, isn't it? Now I am very mindful that it's getting late and I am in my garden, so I'm probably gonna cut some of the calling off a little bit. Many of these duck species have already left and they've gone back to the breeding grounds. Now if like me, you two have got a passion for wildlife and you wanna find out a little bit more, then there's one thing for it. Get down to the estuary next October when all the migratory birds have arrived. Get down there at dawn and at dusk when the place is alive and you're lucky to be one of the only people watching the spectacle that unfolds in front of you. There is nothing finer than watching the world wake up at dawn, knowing that most other sane people are tucked away in their beds, and you're witnessing one of God's true marvels all on your own. It may seem a long way away when we're currently sat down on, on COVID-19 lockdown, but October will be here before you know it. Set that as a target, and soon we'll be out there again. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, rapid whistle stop tour of the noises that some of our ducks and our geese species make. As I said, this is a pre-recorded video taking place in my back garden whilst we're on lockdown at seven o'clock at night. So I realized that my erratic calling may have upset some of my neighbors. So I apologize if you're, if you're one of my neighbors and you're watching this. Um, so on that note, I'm probably gonna wrap this up. So here's a challenge for you. If you've got a duck call, if you've got access to a goose call, then I want you to blow it. I want you to make the sound as much like, not a dog, but as much like a goose or a duck as you possibly can, and post it. Send it in to us. We'll have our own little duck calling championship, if you will. If you don't have a call, maybe do it with your mouth. Wank. Wank. I think I've pretty much said everything I need to. So from me, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. And uh, we'll see you again. Thanks. Bye-bye.